Another common problem is well, which station to go to. Well, most people go to the nearest station uh, or go to the nearest supermarket and things about calculating okay, which addresses go to which station or if you are going to plan where to locate your new business where do we have as many addresses close to you as possible then we do use or closer than to your competition at least then we use this partitioning so what we're going to do is that we're going to look at how to subdivide space into areas that are closest to a specific object station in this case in the vector world this is called Tiesner polygons or Voriani polygons if um, you want to use a correct mathematical term but in uh, spatial data the word Tiesner is commonly used so what it does is that you can see here it subdivides space so around each point it creates a polygon that defines the area that is closest to that point so all of this red is closest to that polygon you can see here that we have two points closer to each other these lines are halfway between the two points so all of this green area is closest to that point and all of the yellow is closest to that point so that's a Tiesner polygon and if we go over in arc map and we can uh, deactivate our raster data from before and probably also the addresses so I just got my stations, I'll just zoom to them and um, then I will okay should I, I should grace I should create a new model so I'll just go down and create a new model new model this time I'll be working on my train stations and I'll be using the Tiesner polygon so we'll go down under our analysis tools and under proximity we have this create Tiesner polygons that I will then generate based on my train stations so we can I now Tiesner polygons can have all our attributes or there's the feature ID of the station so if I wanted to have all of the station information in my Tiesner polygon I'll say all here otherwise I'll just get the FID and of course I could join them and it will call them density Tiesner polygon that's okay so fine and add our result to the display and run it so now we have our result save it um, we have our polygons and each of these polygons has information about which station they are closest to so I could go in and color them accordingly if I go to my table of contents and take my Tiesner and properties and symbology as categories and the station name there at all values so here we have the polygons these Tiesner polygons it's basically if you live in this area you should go to that station if it's in this area you should go to that station to go to the closest station at least and if we are lucky we can see that on the border lines between these I just zoom in on let's say this area here you should see that up here we're going this direction down here we're going that direction and down here we're going this direction to get to the station down here so our directions change with these border lines because the directions are showing the way to the nearest station and the arrows are showing um, or the colors in the polygons are showing which nearest which station is the nearest and the arrows are showing which direction so 
luckily there is some correlation between the tools and if I instead of doing like this take and also my layout of my stations to be a single and just have a hollow of a pink edge a bit thick we should see also that these correlate with my station direction so we can see that we have to change directions also in the raster version the raster version of um, the tool we're using for our teasnip polygon is called Euclidean allocation and it calculates again the what is the nearest non no data or vector data so we have our input we have our vector what are we going to but attribute identifies our stations our output layer it can then do a minimum max and you can see that it can also do what we were doing before so matter of fact we didn't have to use the other ones if we need, knew that we wanted to do an allocation we might as well only use the allocation and then drop the directional tool because this one does both the allocation the direction and the distance so over in arc map if I uh, have my model from before da -da 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 -da. so I just take this model here and edit the last one this is where I did the teasner if I instead of you just doing the teasner go down into my spatial analyst section and go and do a Euclidean allocation like that based on my stations it will do the allocation and it will do a distance which of course could uh, uh, put distance called distance again just overwrite the distance from before and my direction and I'll just write my directions from before so now this tool does exactly the same as I did before calculates the distance and direction but also calculates the location which hopefully should be the same as our teasness so I'll just add this one to my display and run the tool and you can see it doesn't really take longer than it did before when it had to calculate the distance and direction because they are included so this is um, our tool and you can see that the colors are now given by our raster allocation tool so my top layer that is giving colors here is my uh, raster allocation and they which match finely with um, my teasnip polygons so if I just zoom out to the full layer we can see that I don't want to see the address on top we can see that the raster coloring matches finely with the vector border lines so we get more or less the same result again independent of whether we're using the raster or the vector equivalent of the tools so that was partitioning so the partitioning we commonly use to assign to okay what is my hinterland which area will go to this station so I could if I wanted to know how many addresses were closest to a specific station well um, I could use my good old trick and do a uh, intersection of these of my polygons on my um, addresses or I could also use a tool that I'll be talking about in a later video which is called spatial join that does exactly this it assigns to each polygon the number of addresses that are within these um, polygons so we'll see that in a moment